Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Peter, and today we are going to draw with this pen. Actually, a pen that I've already drawn with. And this video is sponsored by Raycon, once again. Now, I will say I've done this video a little bit backwards because I've already done the drawing that you're going to see in the second part of the video. I found that I wanted to make a video and uh, I had some sort of energy, but I didn't quite have the gumption to sit down and create this part where I chit chat with a camera in front of me, but I did have the energy somewhere deep within me to start drawing. So I did that part already. The last few days I sat down and drew for several hours and it was a pretty cool drawing. Um, but that does provide some interesting insight to me at this stage of the video, which is that I already know that this pen is capable of being drawn with. Also, I will admit that I've had this pen for a while. This is the Tactile Turn Gist Fountain Pen, all right? It's $120 plus. It was sent to me with the additional titanium nib on it, which is $60 extra. This was described to me as giving a little bit more feedback than a normal stainless steel nib, which you can tell I'm a little bit new still to the fountain pen game because I had no idea what that was supposed to mean to me. Feedback from a nib? I don't know, I was imagining vibrations or it pushing back at me or I don't know. I think it really just means that it's a little bit more flexible. I will say that as soon as I started using it, no, here look, here's the problem. First of all, there's a couple problems. Not necessarily with this pen, but some of you may remember this little guy from my previous video, right? Uh, infamous. I realized that with these reviews, I've, I have different levels of personal investment, right? That's probably why I was, you know, so infuriated with this. I wasn't that mad, but uh, when I get sent like a pen like this, for example, which I probably would never have if it wasn't just sent to me because I probably wouldn't just spring $260 on this uh, unless it really spoke to me in some way, which it didn't right off the bat. Not, not right off the bat anyways. Really all I wonder about it when it's just sent to me for free is things like, uh, you know, well, I'm curious about it. Um, I wonder, you know, how it will draw, if it will draw, if it'll give me any problems, if it will leak, if, it, if there's a cartridge converter inside, there's a bunch of little random things like that. One of the big things I don't wonder as much is, am I gonna get my money's worth, right? And that's a huge thing to wonder, something that any of us will probably wonder about any product we actually buy before and after we buy it. So just keep that in mind. And I feel like I should mention that more. I, tr I try to be honest. I am always honest um, about, like I never hide when things are sponsored, okay? There's, I say, you know, this is sponsored by this, and there's like usually a little counter, and this was sent to me for free. I, I try not, but I think it is good to just keep in our minds. It, I think it affects me subconsciously, you know, how much I may like or dislike a pen, or I think maybe just if I spend money on it, it's just more likely to be a, a stronger reaction, more of a polar opposites thing. Also, if someone had told me years ago that I would later become an ear model, I would have said, but what about my eyebrows? They usually do most of the heavy lifting. But speaking of sponsorships, what about Raycons? Their everyday E25 earbuds are their best model yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and bloop, bloop, ah. A more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. They sound just as amazing as any other top audio brands you know, but start at just half the price. The compact carrying case can charge them four times on a single charge. They're great for working from home, working out, or listening to music or podcasts for hours without driving the people around you crazy. So click the link in the description to get 15% off your order by raycon.com slash peter draws. So did I say did I say this yet? I don't remember how much I've said because I rev I already recorded this video once before and then I 
remember, realized that I, the, well, I didn't record it. I sat here and talked to my cameras once and they weren't recording, which was a little bit disheartening. But what I wanted to say is that I had this pen for a while. It was sent to me. Um, you know, like I mentioned, I didn't pay for it. So keep that in mind. But I had it for a while and it was just sitting there. And I didn't do anything with it because something about this just seems a little soulless. It just seems like, well, a hunk of metal. This is titanium. And this is where the name Tectile from Tectile Turn comes in. It does have all these carefully engraved ridges on it, which are kind of interesting. I don't know how much I love it. It is nice on the, on the grip. I do like that on the grip there. You know, this is all like created by a CNC lathe. And it's nice that the threads here are flat top so they don't dig into you, especially since I was holding the pen like this a lot of the time, all extended, unchoked instead of choked up. Well, I do kind of have a callus right here. I think it's called a, a writer's bump. I think a lot of you might have this if you draw a lot. It's like a bump. You see that? It's like a big callus from holding the pen so much. So I don't think it would have really bothered me if there were like huge metal spikes on this part. It wouldn't have bothered me much. Also, it's I don't really like the feeling of when these... That's a terrible feeling. And if you ever are foolish enough to try and post it, same kind of metal on metal fingernails on a chalkboard feeling. So I had a lot of misgivings about it right off the bat because I didn't really like how it looked. It's kind of a boring shape to me, uh, just like your classic cigar shape, which I guess is kind of hypocritical of me because I like this other pen recently, which is a similar shape. But, you know, I'm, I'm a human and I'm, a, I'm allowed to have multiple, um, you know, clashing opinions at the same time. I don't have to be like one human slate, a sheet of paper with no contrasting or conflicting things going on. I'm complicated, okay? Anyways, I finally worked up the energy to try it out. And I fell in love with it at that point. Like I said, it might be just the nib, but the nib is attached to the rest of it. Uh, you know, it's attached to the pen. You get this whole feeling. It's the weight of it. They do have this in... I think brass and copper, maybe acrylic too, uh, but this is a good weight and it felt good and I drew with it and it was delicious. I'll talk to you more as we draw, as we watch the drawing footage together, all right? Um, what I was trying to say at the end of my little intro there, which I'm sure was like half an hour long, is the reason I, the reason I really started liking this pen when I didn't initially, the reason why the pen lay on my desk for so long, calling out to me, saying, Peter, Peter, please use me. I'll give me a chance, Peter. And I was just ignoring it, neglecting it. But then once I finally touched the tip of the pen to the paper, it was it felt great. I, I had this sensation, the feeling, which this comparison, this metaphor immediately popped into my head, which might not make sense to you, but this is what it was, is it felt like drawing with the tip of a delicate branch. Like maybe a branch like two or three feet long, like a young, soft and supple branch. And there, there was something that felt great about it. And now you might say, hey, replicating this feeling might be as simple as getting that nib again and you could get it on a much cheaper pen you could stick that nib into a branch any old piece of wood actually and maybe that's true that might be worth trying actually but i think there is something to be said for the weight and the balance and yeah maybe the texture um that they've accomplished and achieved here in this pen i'm not sure i am not an accomplished or experienced pen maker. So I don't know if I would pay $280 for this pen, but I did enjoy drawing with it. I will tell you that much. I don't really want to be the kind of pen review channel that people base their purchases off of. And I acknowledge that that has already happened. I really just want to have things 
and share my, ex- I just want to share my experiences, right? But as soon as I start reviewing, reviewing things, because I, I don't want people to buy a pen because I, re- I enjoyed it, right? And then they don't like it. And then they feel like they've wasted money and, and then it's my fault, you know? Even if they don't tell me it's my fault, I feel like it's my fault. Anyways. Anyways, um, I like the pen. I do. And I I was drawing what I feel like here were crummy lines. By that I don't mean they were crummy in, in a bad way, but like R. Crumb. Who's it? What's his first name? Robert Randall? R. Crumb is a famous illustrator. He made like uh, comics and stuff, and they had a certain visual vibration to them, a little bit of shakiness. And for a lot of this drawing, I was really embracing that, especially since I was holding it that it, holding it with that extended stance, like I was mentioning. There really was another time in my life when I was so much more careful with my lines when I drew all my lines a lot more delicately and carefully. And I am thankful for that time, but I'm also thankful to be out of that time. I still, I think it's good because I still reach back and use that experience to occasionally, even in this drawing, it happened a few times when I did, like when I was drawing some little tendrils, when I needed to draw like a couple of uh, lines very close to each other, uh, like little vines and stuff. When I need to be very careful and precise, I had that practice from all those years when I was like drawing mandalas and careful patterns and stuff. But looking back on it, it's just like, to me, it feels like such a headache to draw like that now. This feels so much more expressive and exciting and, I don't know, fun to me. So I'm just enjoying doing it this way right now, and I'm sure I'll go through another phase later. I've just noticed that, I don't know, I guess the... Because the more you're alive, or the more you draw, the more you can look back and notice the ups and downs and the phases and stuff. It's interesting. Anyways, I don't hope I hope all of you don't mind me using this YouTube channel as a bit of a personal journal. Like I just is it okay if I just sit here and like this is like an audio journal over the you know, there's like you can watch me draw and then I sit here and these are my audio logs day 47 right that sort of thing that's pretty much what i'm doing here i mean i can do that a little bit more i mean it's like a web blog web blog but there's got to be a better name for it like a video journal a, a vernal welcome to peter's vernal <sighs> more on that i feel like oh oh I've almost said like two things at the same time now. I feel like I have had some bad habits lately. Mostly, I don't know if this would all have happened regardless because of this summer. I was really enjoying school happening and all the structure that came with it. Having somewhere to go every day, something to do, right? Uh, but it also got kind of magnified, these these issues, these problems, because of, of course, you know, coronavirus, the quarantine, all of this, being stuck inside so much, being stuck inside my apartment, being stuck inside my head. Um, And I don't know if you read my caption on my latest Instagram post, which is, if you have seen the Instagram Instagram post, then you've already seen this drawing, which is a bit of a spoiler, I guess. I don't know, should I put a spoiler warning on those? Um, You've already seen the finished product. And at the bottom of this drawing, I write the word at the very end of the drawing, the last thing I do is I write the word compensation, right? And that's what I feel like I do with my drawing a lot of the time. And I've mentioned this on this channel before is I have all these little problems bubbling up in my mind, you know, and it might be, you know, like, Oh, Peter, uh, Peter, I'm, Peter, you're getting fat, you know, like you put on some weight or Peter, you, Peter, you, how are you still, you know, I'm about to turn 30 and like, 10 days I'm about to turn 30 Peter you're still single Uh, Peter your apartment's messy Peter you're you know what are you doing with your you know money problems Uh, Peter you know your how's your mental health 
all of those things kind of contribute to mental health, worrying about these things. You know, there's just like all these things. And, and then I think, you know, well, I'll just try to make up for it with drawing. If I just get good enough at drawing, uh, maybe it'll save me from all these other things, right? And I'm not sure exactly how I justify that in my head, but it seems to work at the time. And it seems to work to motivate me to draw. I mean, I think I would, I would draw anyways, otherwise, but I don't know. Drawing is maybe the easier thing sometimes than working on myself, like the hard thing. Like drawing is definitely easier than doing the dishes. Drawing is definitely easier than going out for a run. Definitely easier than, uh, I don't know what else I should be doing. Figuring out my life, I guess. I tell myself maybe if I become some sort of superstar rock star artist, then I can just, you know, pay for a, a personal dietitian and pay for a a personal, you know, therapist and and I I can somehow my drawing skill will overshadow all my other problems and make them all go away or something, which I'm, I know in the back of my head is not a healthy, a healthy way to look at it. It's like my life is out of balance. I, like I have no balance. And then I try to solve it by throwing it even more out of balance. I notice a problem and I try to, I, I notice a problem, the lack of balance, and then I try to fix it by throwing it even more out of balance instead of just, well, you know, the balance. Anyways, I do just need to talk to my therapist some more. I have like a counselor that I enjoyed talking to before the whole COVID thing, but it'll be, you know, I've been t- 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 telling myself I don't want to do like an online, you know, video call session because that's like dumb or something, but it's not. And I need to do that. I don't know why I tell myself, because also sometimes I tell myself, Peter, you don't need to talk to the therapist. You can just, look, you're a smart guy. You can figure this stuff out. I mean, Peter, you have all the answers already. You know what to do. Just go out there, go for a run, go for a bike ride, get exercise, eat healthier. You know, I feel like I know the answers, but there's got to be some other reason why I'm not doing it. Why I can't put the pieces, I have the pieces, I just can't figure out how to put them all together, right? So maybe that's what the therapist helps with. Drawing, I'm not I'm not saying drawing is like a huge problem in my life. I'm just saying it's not the solution to everything like I wish it was. Anyways, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of audio diary for you. As far as my shoulder, updated my shoulders. I went in, I got x-rays. I don't know how much they cost me. I still haven't got the bill on those yet. That's a little bit scary. Um, This is weird how they don't tell you how much stuff costs before you get it. And then I, they said, you know, good news, nothing's ripped or torn in my shoulder joints. No chips or tears or holes or anything where there shouldn't be holes. And then I went back and they called later, the, the, oh, the, the ortho... The, the bone doctor or joint doctor, whatever, whatever he's called, he's like, okay. And, you know, he was like talking to me and um, I was just very distracted by his signed Michael Jordan poster on his wall. Actually, it was signed by both Michael Jordan and I think it was um, like the, it was, in, it was from Michael Jordan when he was in the, at, when he went to UNC. And the UNC like sports commissioner or something. It's very interesting. I, I was very distracted by it. And anyways, then he's like, all right, so the next thing is to get an MRI of your shoulder, but we need to inject dye into your shoulders so there's more contrast. And that really like really freaked me out. The idea of a needle going into my shoulder joint to inject dye in there. Like I don't feel like there's a lot of extra room. Maybe I mean maybe. There is a ton of extra room in my shoulder joints. That's where why they keep coming dislocated. Now that I think about it, anyway, I didn't. I don't like needles, 
anyways, but that's not the main problem. The main problem is later they called to try and schedule it. And the, 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 the lady on the phone is very nice. She's giving me all sorts of options of different places I could go to get this MRI. And she's like, and pretty much, but pretty much every option cost over $2,000 uh, to get this MRI with the injection and everything. And I was like, uh, okay. And, and then he, the guy also mentioned just going straight to getting some surgery. And then after he mentioned surgery, he's like, so you've had like all this physical therapy and stuff, right? I was like, no, but you know how it is. Like you ever, have you ever been at the doctor and then they're like talking to you? Maybe this also happens at like the mechanic and stuff too. And, and then once you go home, you're like, okay, now I know what I want to say. It's like everything hits you later when you're standing in the shower. Anyway, so I've got on the phone with them later, eventually. Pretty much it was just today that I got on the phone with them and tell, told them that I, no, I, before I inject anything or spend $2,000 on MRIs or do any surgeries, can we just try the physical therapy, you know? I just want to do some exercises, and then maybe the physical therapist should be able to see any red flags, like, hey, this guy can't even do the basic exercises, you know? whatever let's just start there that seems like the basic logical increment of steps that we should go down to me anyways so that's where i'm at all right i think that's all i've got to say right now thanks thanks for listening everyone i'm pretty happy with how this drawing turned out the paper if anyone's wondering is uh excuse me for all the people who are wondering if i'm holding back a burp the whole time while i'm talking yes yes i am and until now, because I just let it out. It was a silent burp, but it was there. Also, can you tell I'm losing my voice? I don't know why. Um, well, the paper is Strathmore Bristol paper. And the ink is Bristol... No, <laughs> the ink is carbon... Platinum carbon. Black ink. And oh, it all flowed out onto the paper very well with this pen. It was, you know, maybe it is just the nib. It could just be the nib. I might want to try. I think the that other custom pen I got for I was using on some other videos recently was also a Bach nib. So maybe that's maybe I just like Bach nibs. It could be. Um, but yeah, I was gonna say something else, but I forgot. I'll say it in a different video, maybe one day. All right, y'all take care. All right, goodbye. Goodbye.